one of life's necessities, a place to live and call home. And for savvy investors who tapped in early, a journey filled with opportunities. Sub-Saharan Africa, home to some of the fastest growing cities in the world. The United Nations predicts that over the next 80 years, nearly 40% of the world's population will live in Africa. The continent's population boom is creating increased demand for quality residential and commercial real estate. The shortage of homes and the increase in the number of people living and working in Africa makes it an attractive continent for property investors. The rising demand for real estate is partly driven by an increase in the number of multinational companies in search of commercial spaces in Africa's major cities. Property investors quick to realize the potential of the real estate market have built cities within cities. We head to Cape Town, South Africa. South Africa's property market is said to be the largest in Africa. It is one that attracts international investors and the market in Cape Town is a cut above the rest. It's quite a dynamic market. It's, uh, although Cape Town is an integral part of South Africa, we are very diverse from the rest of the country. Um, it is stated officially that our market is 6% uh, above the rest of the country from a growth point of view. Uh, so we're back in the trend. Investors looking to make significant gains in the property market here must keep their eyes open for the right spots. The key to success for uh, an investor in the real estate market in Cape Town has been the the same as what it has for the last 100 years, and that's location, location, and location. Many investors are blinded by the backdrop of economic uncertainties in Africa, but risk-averse players in Cape Town's property market have seen and continue to see substantial growth. Cape Town is really booming, really booming now. It's a very attractive um, due to the great climate we have but also the cosmopolitan uh, structure and build-up of, of Cape Town. It also helps that this is a well-sought-after spot for tourists and sun lovers. It's just the beauty of Cape Town. It has been once again voted one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And would you believe I'm standing here in the middle of winter and it's 23 degrees, short sleeve shirt, our weather is just divine. In sunny Cape Town lies Century City, a fast growing destination that has succeeded in creating the mixed use lifestyle for up to 60,000 people. Behind me is the first property we're going to be looking at today. So let's go see what Century City has got to offer. We are a city within a city. We have the, obviously the residential component, but then we have the commercial, we have the retail sector, and in the heart of all of that is we have this fantastic nature conservation area called Intaka. Mixed use developments like this one merge commercial and residential spaces, providing a convenient location for occupiers. We got involved here in 2004 and we soon realized we were building a community. It's not about bricks and mortar, it's about that other dimension, that so the glue that holds all of that together. These integrated urban developments sit well with residents and office occupiers all over the world.
people today are very uh, fussy with their time and I think um, gone are the days where you sit for an hour and a half in a car tra traveling from home to work and you want to use that time more efficiently. You want to be in the gym, you want to be having coffee, you want to have a drink at Tiger's Milk and uh, that's, that's where people are moving towards. Above average returns are considered normal here. Folk that are buying our developments off plan have achieved 20 to 35 percent capital growth by the time the building is finished and thereafter the, uh, at 15 percent per annum has been very easily achieved. As the city approaches saturation point, properties continue to sell in record time as buyers are drawn to the community feel. Sales at, Ce at Century City have exceeded all of our expectations. They've been absolutely phenomenal. A case of point is the recent development that we did at Matrix, comprised 51 units. It was sold out within 45 minutes. Yeah, 45 minutes, that was unbelievable. While profits are being made, there are challenges that come with running a mixed-use development. The biggest thing with, with mixed use um, is essentially is the different constituents all have different needs. So it almost gets down to the legal side of things where um, you, you sometimes need a middleman. Residential tenants have different needs to corporate tenants. Although they're all striving for the same thing, ultimately how they get there is, is slightly different. But the trials don't end there. Some critics class mixed-use development as risky business, as developers are in many ways putting all their eggs in one basket. So what is the secret to the success of development like Century City? Have a vision, stick to your vision, have a goal that you want to achieve, and then you need a lot of patience besides deep pockets, um, because there are going to be things that come along that nobody anticipated. Technologies are going to change, and you're going to stick to your vision, but the path that you take to get there is going to be very different to the path that you probably mapped out at the onset. But we did have a vision of a, of a mixed-use city that people can be proud of, that people living here um, have the best of everything on their doorstep. That was a vision. How we achieve it, um, well, that's, that's what the, where the developer comes in. And the route that he takes will depend on many factors. He, macroeconomic factors, um, you name it, successful marketing, good planning, wonderful architects and engineers and professionals helping you along the way, and a large dollop of luck. was fun but we're here today in Lagos Nigeria and we are at Landmarker Towers which is of course a mixed-use development here in Lagos we're trying to understand this idea of mixed-use development a little better today we're going to be speaking to the CEO of Landmark Africa Paul Owanibe so come with me it's this way the real estate market in Nigeria's most cosmopolitan state Lagos has seen rapid development over the last decade. Lagos is the business nerve of Africa's largest economy, and the city has witnessed a surge in the construction of high-rise buildings, mostly intended for residential and commercial purposes. Hello. Good morning. So I'm here to see Paul. Just want to sign it. Okay, no problem. Well, three, <laughs> three things. Uh, I've got three passions, and they're all represented here. Um, my family, you can yes. see all the pictures all over. My 
between kids and my dear wife. A landmark. Yes. yes. Our theme, live workplace. I live here. I work downstairs yeah. and I play out How there. How convenient. Which we're here, which we're going up. And then the third thing is Arsenal. Um, and Arsenal, you can see quite a few yes. things. I can see a few things. I saw one just before we walked in. Actually. Yes, that was an old trophy. Great, yeah. great. So we're going to be finding out a little bit more about you. So where do we start? I think I want to go outside. Because that view is just stunning, to eh? die for. Stunning. Please yes. this way. Thank you. Stunning. Right, we're on the edge of Victoria Island, the edge of Lagos, the edge of Nigeria, the edge of Africa, this coast. Um, that's Landmark Village. We call this Landmark Drive. Um, so we acquired this about 10 years ago. And that's Landmark Village, the Hard Rock Cafe, the Shiro Restaurant, a couple of residential buildings coming up, a five-star hotel coming up, and a couple of office blocks coming up. Nice. After years of living and working abroad, real estate entrepreneur Paul Owanibe brought home the live, work, play concept. He identified a gap in the property market in Lagos and took steps to replicate what he saw in sophisticated cities around the world. I want to hear the story behind Landmark. So where did this idea come from you know, to create this Africa-focused real estate company? Well. So I suppose the landmark story started what 20 years ago, 20 years, 20 odd years ago. We we started in Lon in London in England, um, and we basically ran serviced offices and property property consulting businesses across Europe, America, and some parts of Southeast Asia. Um, now being African and having schooled in Africa, um, but I lived a majority of my life life abroad, and um, I came to Africa quite often. And the big dist the big difference between say Europe and Africa, was people tended to do things in the same sort of place in Europe. And in Africa, everything seemed so far away. Mm -hmm. um, and Africa, as Africa became a more sort of serious investment destination, people, um, organizations turned up in Africa, they built their homes in a compound somewhere far away, offices in a compound, security transporting them in between. Um, so this whole obsession with security, and because of that, things were all over the place. Um, so having come into Africa sort of six, seven years after starting Landmark, um, running the service offices, we realized there was a huge opportunity to sort of replicate what you see in sort of major international cities, you know, the Londons, New Yorks, Parises of the world. Um, and we thought our solution to that was this live, work and play phenomenon. Um, so that's the short story. Live, work and play. So tell me about that concept. So live, work and play is, is that idea of um, going to work, in the same place as where you, you live and um, spend your leisure time. And that sort of, you know, I think it has a very strong sort of lifestyle and commercial attractions. It keeps you, keeps you away from traffic, it keeps you away from security issues, it allows you to sort of rationalize your time. It gives, it, you know, we were talking before the, the program started, um, um, I've never lived more than five, five minutes away from where I've worked. Um, and for the first time in my life, I now live a few staircases away from where I work. Let's talk a little bit about some of your projects. We know that Landmark Towers is one. Um, so Landmark Towers, um, so we're, we're property developers, as you know, so we're building owners, um, and we specialize effectively in creating property all the way from the acquisition of the land to the, to the management of the building. But it's all about the property, the bricks and mortar. Um, what we're not specialists in is operation, operations. Um, so what we try to do when we build our buildings is look for what we feel are the best operators in the business in any environment. Um, so fast forward straight to where we are now. So we call this the landmark. It's managed by Amara Suites. Um, we looked around Lagos and we thought, who provides sort of international standard operations um, to multinational corporates in Lagos? Um, and there are not that many names out there that sort of met that benchmark. Um, and Amara was by head and shoulders the best. So um, we partnered with Amara and here we are. That passion led to the creation of this mixed-use commercial development in the heart of Victoria Island in Lagos. Housing offices, a boutique hotel, restaurant and a leisure center. It took quite a few, a few years to bring it to, to construction um, and it's about a year old now and it is a true mixed-use building. The Live Work Play concept creates destinations that have strong commercial and lifestyle attractions and when it comes to business and profit, it has proven to be a winner. For me, there are two things I look out for. One is service and the other is money. 
Um, so in terms of benefits, it has very strong financial attractions, but extremely strong customer service and um, demand attractions as well. Diversification. It allows you to divest, diversify your risk in terms of assets. So you're allowed to get into hotels, you're allowed to get into conference centers, commercial, as well as residential. And so as the microeconomic indicators right now are softening the market, you're allowing your risk to be spread across different asset classes. Time is money. So hopefully as you're more efficient, you become, very, you become richer. You have the opportunity to put all your guests and all your clients in one box and give them whatever it is they need. While it's easy to point out the financial viability of mixed-use developments, the real estate market is a capital-intensive play, and the lack of access to funding for projects in Nigeria dissuades the next generation of up-and-coming real estate tycoons. In spite of the demand for loans and mortgages, banks and financial institutions are held back by the high level of risk associated with the property industry. It's the realization of if things go wrong, it's the rule of law and that's where you have big problems because you can be in court for years to come and meanwhile you have to take provision on, on this thing. So before you go into a transaction, you're looking at what, what can go, yes, yeah, this is the opportunity, but what can go wrong and if something goes wrong, where, where are depositors' funds? In other climates, you're, you're going to be looking at funding is going to come from things like pension funds where those type of funds are very long term and they are, they are used, they are used in infrastructure like, like real estate, but we don't have those opportunities yet in Nigeria. To add to the cautious climate, Nigeria is currently facing a recession due to the drop in oil prices and weakening of the currency, and this has made things more difficult for investors. So we're losing 30 to 40 percent of our revenues literally on the button. Um, day, day after day, week after week, um, on foreign exchange. And obviously some things have stabilized and normalized now. So, um, so we hope as we go forward, we, we hedge, we plan, we plan differently. But we live in a very different world now in Nigeria than we did sort of a year and a half ago. But, um, you know, those investors are stepped away, literally lurking around the borders, waiting for the good times to come back, to come back in. Still, experts say that there are bright spots in the real estate market. In the midst of challenges, there are opportunities, and there are some unique opportunities that could come in, either in different types of asset classes, in the locations that you may want to consider, and even JV opportunities, and even opportunities to buy from investors or developers that have ongoing challenges and we're willing to partner with investors for their project. We do know that investors are interested in coming into the market, but because of the uncertainty around the market, they're more or less at a wait and see position. When it comes to prospects, the mixed-use proposition is one that seems to be a better fit for banks, providing a buffer against uncertainties. Mixed-use, first of all, means that potential multiple revenue streams. They are betting the revenue stream, not, not on one customer, but many people. So if you go to the landmark, you see things like there's restaurants, there's offices, there's a hotel. So there are many revenue streams that, should I say, help them defend against inflationary times like this. People will always go to those, those places for certain needs. And they certainly are. Just next door, along the Atlantic Ocean waterfront, is another mixed-use development, also under the landmark umbrella. This is a new site, obviously, um, so I guess you're going to tell us about this. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, Joe is our development manager, so the, the dreams that are going to be delivered are, are, is Joe's responsibility. Mercy is, our, is one of our operations people, and she's advising Joe from an operational and a use angle of this development. So, Hi guys, it's nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Hi. Hi. You're right now standing in the middle of our landmark village phase C um, part of our project. This, pro uh, this part of the site is around 25,000 square meters and it has a few different uses. One being a um, hotel building, approximately 260 um, keys, combination of hotels and extended stay, as well as two high-rise residential buildings, um, close to 100 units, as well as retail that um, combines and really um, attaches to the two um, residential buildings. So you have um, a little bit of everything here, which goes with our landmark village um, development. Uh, the development as a whole has about seven different uses. Three of the uses are here and they all combine to have a very efficient, very flexible, and very user-friendly live-work-play theme which is part of our landmark 
uh, core. So I know you just mentioned that you're building a hotel, a hospitality business here, and a lot of people that I speak to, investors in this space, they tend to talk about how this is a very difficult time to be doing business in the hospitality space. Uh, some say that now is not the time at all for foreign investors uh, to be looking. I know obviously you're trying to attract foreign investors to come and take up this uh, new building that you have here. And many say this is a very bad time. So I guess my question is, why would you think of doing this now? First and foremost is we've raised most of our finance and we've got strong connections with international investors that are very interested in this part of the world and in this industry and in this market sphere. Um, so, so at the end of the day, we're, we're one of very few institutional developers in Nigeria. Um, so I would like to believe we know what we're doing. Yes? Mm -hmm. uh, the, second, the second is, Construction takes a long time, as you can see, we're at the very early stages of it. Yes? Yeah. And the best time to build is when you talk about the market like this, because it takes two to three years to build, and by the time you come onto the market, um, the market should have recovered. Mm -hmm. uh, and Lagos is a mega city. Yeah. So there are 25, 28, 22 million people, depending on what numbers you read. But there are a lot of people in Lagos, and there are a lot of investors. Lagos is becoming a better investment destination. And hotels, people don't come here, spend three months, and build a house. People come here and stay in hotels, and there are really insufficient number of hotels hotel rooms in Lagos when you compare it to other mega cities in the world. Landmark Village draws in over 6,000 people every single week. Enticed by the fun, entertainment and festivities hosted in its convention center, one of the largest in the city of Lagos. We feel that in a, in a city like Lagos that has so much vibe and so much buzz, yes, there should just be more than single, single family dwellings, offices and leisure centres. Um, the idea here is to create everything, bring everything to one spot and create a destination environment. Equally appealing are the internationally branded restaurant chains on site, changing the face of the Lagos nightlife. On a whole, I would say on a weekly basis, I do get close to I would say 4,000 to 5,000 people coming inside the cafe and in a monthly basis I would say 80 to 20,000. We did not expect such a big response from the local public and it's mostly like uh, local public that comes in. We do have the expat population but I would say that the locals are the ones who are really enjoying the flavors and the taste of Hard Rock Cafe in Lagos. For Paul and his team, the journey to success has been an expensive but fulfilling one. We have spent probably over $100 million already on some of the things we've done um, and th that money has literally gone into the hands of individuals and supplier organizations and there's probably another two to three hundred million dollars to spend literally on this side we're standing on now behind me where I stand here right now there'll be a 21 story building standing here in three years time come and interview me in three years time we look forward to it Cape Town South Africa Lagos Nigeria two cities in Africa's top two economies bringing together the places we live and work to create the right formula for success in the property world.